Okay, so we ended kind of abruptly with the Trojan War um, last time. As I realized, we got to a 20 minute mark and that might be a good stopping point. Um, but with all of this Greece stuff happening and then over into that Turkey area, the Trojan War being fought here with um, Troy and what's now Turkey. If you wonder about that name, another name for Troy was Ilium. And so the Iliad was about what was happening there in Troy. But it's a conflict that you um, may know a lot more about than you realize because we get a lot of um, terms and names and things that still come out of the war. If you um, clean your house using Ajax, a cleaning detergent that uh, comes from the strongman Ajax, um, your Achilles um, tendon being a very weak spot on your body down by the heel. Achilles was um, this very famous Greek war hero um, who the Greeks were trying to get to go fight against the Trojans. And um, Achilles kind of, uh, the as the myth goes, part son of, um, is part royalty essentially and part part god. Uh, he was dipped into the um, river Styx when he was a baby, and uh, because of the way that he was dipped, let's see if we can find that. He, uh, as his mom dipped him here to give him immunity, those are weird pictures, because what are you going to find when you're looking for a weird picture of a baby, uh, but here a much larger, uh, much later uh, painting done, the only part of him that was not dipped was his heel where it was being, his leg was being held by his uh, mom, so that was his only point of weakness. So Reese's peanut butter cups are a weakness of mine, Achilles would be, um, according to Greeks, uh, killed um, by being hit in the Achilles heel. Um, other things that um, that emerge out of this mentioned the famous, uh, earlier the f famous Trojan horse in this uh, conflict. One of the more debated things about whether um, that still happened uh, involving, let's see, if, um, Anyone who uh, has seen Monty Python things knows that it involves a Trojan rabbit um, as a spoof on, oh man, an ad. Um, what happens with the Trojan horse, essentially, the account of the Trojan horse is that Odysseus, a figure who we'll talk about in a bit, decided to bring in that Trojan, the wooden uh, horse that we saw before there was a rendition of and the Trojans thought, oh, what a cool present. And they brought it in and unbeknownst to them, there were Greeks hiding inside who were then able to open the gates. Um, so now at this point here, they make a spoof of that with the Trojan bunny rabbit. Um, and they were supposed to be inside and it, and it turned out that they weren't uh, inside. So if you like, well, satirical things. Uh, then we got that there for you. Where was I? Uh, back here in the Greek um, culture. So Homer writing those things and things. Oh, um, the golden apple. Uh, if any of you ever watched WYFF, they honor a teacher weekly with a golden apple uh, award winner. That's not so great of a thing, really, because this golden apple was in the Iliad set up a, a dispute and designed to create discord among some of the goddesses um, present. So that is this essentially the uh, some of the, the major things that are going on in Iliad. Um, when the, uh, the Trojan horse was supposedly um, built by Odysseus, and so then in the follow-up, kind of like the sequel, if you will, uh, uh, the Odyssey is about um, uh, 
Penelope and Odysseus. Um, Odysseus, a Greek soldier from the war, trying to get back home to his beloved wife, Penelope. Um, Penelope has been um, a faithful wife. So again, you've got sort of a teaching component here in history because she is viewed as sort of this ideal woman, virtuous for waiting for her husband. She's got all of these other men ready, who are ready to um, marry her and saying, your husband's never going to return. I can't imagine having that many men waiting around for me um, like that. But she, it's been about 20 years and she does not give up this hope that Odysseus is still trying to return home, even though he can't text her and say, OMG, I'm so sorry that I'm late. So she waits for a couple of decades for her husband to return. This is where you've got the, the one-eyed Cyclops, um, another movie um, that uh, um, portrays this is O Brother, Where Art Thou? Um, the story here you have the sirens who supposedly um, the character played by George Clooney and his friends are um, turned into, one of them is supposedly turned into a toad. Uh, is this something that happens in the Odyssey? So George Clooney in this movie, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou, plays Ulysses Everett McGill. Um, it goes by Everett, but the name Ulysses is the Latin version of the name um, Odysseus. He is trying to get home to his wife, Penny. So if you'd like an excuse to watch some George Clooney and be historical and educational at the same time, then you can go watch your brother, Where Art Thou? So you see lessons being taught by Homer, but there's still these things that we um, have in, in our culture um, today that we've learned from um, this time period. Another thing that happens during that same archaic period would be the first Panhellenic games, meaning we already talked about the Hellenic world of the Greece, the Hellenes. Um, pan meaning across, so across Greece. Um, this would be the basis, therefore, um, I lost my little bar that I can write with. And there we go, except I've still got my bad circle. Um, this is the basis of the modern day Olympics. Um, yeah. mm -mm -mm. Um, only men were allowed to compete. Um, they had some of the same competitions as you will still find with things like the javelin throw, different running events, the discus. We already saw the sculpture of the discus thrower. Um, wrestling uh, it was a big deal a few years ago when the modern Olympics planned to drop wrestling, and there were many protests to that. One of the um, powerful points was that wrestling was still one of the original Olympic sports. So only men would compete. Um, they It was usually Greeks versus um, the barbarians. Today, when we hear the word barbarian, we think of hairy, scary, uncouth people. Well, that would be any of us who are not Greek. Um, the Greeks used that terminology in a pejorative way uh, to, to insult non-Greeks who were not as beautiful as Helen and as wonderfully advanced. Apparently their language used a lot of uh, consonants and it sounded like bar, 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 bar to the Greeks. So that is the origin of the word barbarians. Um, there as Greeks and non-Greeks competed alongside each other in the Panhellenic Games. Um, wanting to show some of the similarities, um, you could find at some of these competitions some Zanes. Um, Zanes were bronze statues of Zeus, and they were built with the money from fines collected from cheaters. So just like today, if someone um, 
you know, these people competed naked, which is weird. Thankfully, athletes today in competitions have clothes on. Um, but players are stripped of medals from the Olympics uh, in baseball. Guys like Roger Clemens, Barry Bonds, um, Alex Rodriguez, big name famous baseball players who were very successful, um, have not been inducted into the Hall of Fame as a result of their cheating and use of steroids. Um, you can have the Chicago Black Sox, if any of you are familiar with uh, Shoeless Joe Jackson from South Carolina. He was formally kicked out of baseball. The evidence of him is um, not as, as strong, but several members uh, of the uh, Chicago White Sox one year in the early 20th century um, tried to take money to throw the World Series. So they're still, just as we have cheaters today, they had cheaters and those people are punished. So these statues honored Zeus, the high god. Um, you can still see there some of the um, statues gone, but the their bases. And it would also have the name of the cheater listed there. So cheating frowned upon. People would want to cheat for the same reasons. More money, perhaps, being paid to you if you willingly lose a match or um, something like that. So um, still similar to human psychology um, today. And then we get to the polis, and I'm going to stop it again. 